We're very pleased to have today in our WHRO Williamsburg studio, Kate Gruber, who's the curator for the Tenacious Women series. It's going on over in uh, Jamestown, Jamestown Yorktown Foundation, and you have a lecture going on tomorrow evening, and that lecture is going to be done by none other than Dr. Lucy Worsley, Order <laughs> of the British Empire, OBE, <laughs> who I think Prince Charles gave you that uh, during the investiture. He did, yeah. yes, yes, a proud moment. Do you run a, run into the royals very much? Because you're also the, the joint chief, get the title right, joint chief curator at historic royal palaces. Well, we're not exactly on um, uh, cups of tea terms, but they quite often turn up to open an exhibition, for example, mm -hmm. at the places where I work for part of my time in London as a museum curator, just like Kate here, which are uh, Hampton Court Palace and the Tower of London and Kensington Palace. That must be fascinating just to go through those. Kate, have you gone over and visited and done the, the tour through some of the great British palaces? No, I haven't, but I'm hoping for an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I understand, uh, Lucy, this is your first time in Jamestown, so Kate has been helping you, showing you all of the, the things when we sort of had our little tiff with the British mm -hmm. way, way back <laughs> over the years. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> and I've done that. I gotta, if you ever watch WHRO TV, you have seen Lucy Worsley with so many great programs that you have done on the BBC. And I was watching one not too long ago called the one about the royal wardrobes. Oh, and, yes. And you, yes, got yes. To, you got to wear all these crazy dresses. I did. And that, that Georgian dress, it looked like a clipper ship coming at you. I mean, it was just, <laughs> just I, get, I heard a story that you were walking, maybe I guess through London, and I'm going to be clean on this one, and some clod yelled, F off, little Bo Peep. No. Did that really happen? It did. It did. <laughs> People always yelling things at me. I'll tell you another time. I was walking along um, at Hampton Court, this was, and mm -hmm. I was. it was a sunny day, and I was carrying a parasol. I've got this lovely white frilly parasol that right. looks a bit Edwardian. Uh -huh. It looks just like the sort of thing that Maggie Smith carries about in yeah. Downton Abbey. And a van went past, and he wound down his... It was a white van. Wound down his window, and he shouted out, Oi, you off the telly! And I went, Ooh, and he said, F off, back to 1909. <laughs> and I thought, hmm, well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's very uncouth. That's very it's also, very it's also it's curiously well. well informed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had identified that I was carrying a vaguely well, Edwardian good. artifact. <laughs> you never know when you, when you walk through London. Well, we're <laughs> glad to have you over here in uh, Jamestown in Williamsburg where you can see some of the history that's been done. You've been very much involved in history and I got that undergrad degree at New College, Oxford. That's correct. Uh, I got to do my postdoc work at uh, Exeter, so I spent some oh. time walking around New College and yes. some of the some of the Oxford is a, is a fabulous place. Kate, have you been to Oxford yet? I have not. Oh my gosh, we've got to get get her over to Oxford and see. I feel like like I should plug William and Mary right now, but <laughs> well, William and Mary is is almost a modern college compared to Oxford. The rooms are so old, and I'm sure Kate, you remember this. I think the one I was in. All it had was a little bit of electricity, no running water, minimal heat, and it had been built in 1309 or something like that. They hadn't changed much in it. So Oxford is a fantastic place. You, you got your uh, doctorate at the University of, uh, of Sussex? I did, that's mm -hmm. correct. But while I was doing that, I, I did it as, as a grown-up, and I did it while I was working as a, as a curator. Yeah. Um, for something called English Heritage. It's like the National Park Service. So I was working in all of these fantastic historic houses in Derbyshire, and I was doing research for exhibitions, and I did my doctorate using that research. So that's, that's great, because often when a person is studying art history... Nobody cares what they find out. Right. But uh, what, what a lot of mums and dads don't realise when their kid wants to be a, 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 an art historian is that there are, there are jobs out there in museums and galleries and, and heritage. So that that was that was a really lovely. Well, that was your dad. Time in my life. Dad, who was a professor at Reading University. You're yeah. right. My dad is a scientist. He's a geologist, and he thinks that. And he's right about this. He thinks that science and technology is really important, and right. that scientists will save the world. <laughs> but. And I don't want to set up some kind of spurious arts science uh, debate. He did take it very badly when I said that I wanted to do history. <laughs> and he said in some words that are famous in our family, he said that you'll be cleaning toilets for a living, my girl, if you do a history degree. So it's very proud for me now to be able to say to him, ha, dad. I've been doing radio for 58 years and my grandmother when I was little said, 
don't waste your money buying all of those records. You should invest it in something that will pay out for you. Oh, that's a, yes. That's, everybody has these stories when you when you go back into your past. Kate, uh, tell me a little bit about your background. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a different experience in that my mom has a classics degree. Okay. So <laughs> I didn't get the, oh, but you should do something else kind uh -huh. of talk from her. No, I have a BA in historic preservation okay. and classical humanities and a master's in early American history from William & Mary. And so. have you have you taken uh, our guest here, Lucy, over to the College of William & Mary and shown her around? No, not yet. Got, maybe later. Should. You've we got should. to see the, That's the queen visited a couple of years ago. Everybody goes over to the College of William & Mary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I am very often in the rooms where William & Mary lived at Hampton Court well, and at true. Kensington Palace. The, we have a nice connection there. Go back to the <laughs> original. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about your lecture. Uh, it's going to be tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock, at the uh, Robbins Foundation Theater, and you're going to be talking about Queen Victoria, uh, the daughter, wife, and uh, mother, and widow. And you have a book by that same title. You, you're going to be, I guess, signing the book or selling the book after the, the lecture. But uh, Queen Elizabeth obviously was very tenacious to have been on the throne that many years. I picture someday in a, in a heavenly setting the two Elizabeths and Victoria all discussing their long reigns and all the problems they had <laughs> they had to go with how how does Vic, i mean we and we've had the television series on yes. on channel 15 here as well what do you think about that tv series that's british produced or have you been involved with that at all i have i have i visited the set last summer and i've just finished um writing up an interview that i did with regina coleman queen victoria herself <laughs> and i had the i i was just telling the others I had the wonderful experience of being photographed standing next to her. Now, I'm not a very tall person, but when I stood next to her, she's exactly the right height she to play the five queen. foot one or something yes, like that. Very, yes, yes, very... it's, I felt extremely tall. <laughs> <laughs> Regal, sort yes, of. <laughs> yes, it's a lovely series. The series is like, like that are they're made for entertainment, mm -hmm. Sunday night entertainment. And what's fantastic about them if you work in a museum is that they. They suck people in, and then people, you know, very often want to know more. Did that really happen? Did she really have the nine children? Did she really have those rows with Albert? And then people want to read nonfiction books, and then sometimes they want to go to college and get history degrees. And then they write to me and they say, right, I want your job now that I'm qualified. And that actually makes me happy. I'd well, like to have you to build in my own obsolescence. Well, Kate. Why did you choose this for the series, and how did you get Lucy over here? I mean, it's, I that's, a real that. that's a real catch. That's a real that's a real catch for us. Well, we think that Lucy's a very tenacious lady, and yeah. a lot of her work, of course, um, builds right right into this arc of history that we've been talking about about um, about women just continuing to move conversations forward and being powerful agents of change. So, when we were thinking about um, our exhibition at Jamestown Settlement um, and how that's open all year, we were trying to develop programming. We did develop programming. Um, that continued these stories forward, kind of coming out of the core of the exhibition and, and continuing again this this arc of tenacious spirit that, that women have been driving for 400 plus years. And, and, and the early days of Jamestown, to talk about tenacious women and what they had to go through, mm -hmm. the travails they, they endured uh, coming over on those ships, strange land, that type of thing. Absolutely. And, and that's incredible. why we called the exhibit Tenacity. Okay. Just wanted to hit you right off with the idea that these women were survivors. The ones that have appealed to me that, that I've heard about going around the exhibition with Kate are, are, are numerous, and they're, they're all really different from each other. Some of them were Indian women who were there on the site before the English turned up. Sometimes they get forgotten about. You have the first recorded African arriving in Virginia, That's don't correct. you? A mm -hmm. lady called Angelo. Angelo, 1619. 1619, right? big celebration. And then you uh, have a wave that. of uh, strumpets arriving to, right. to to fuel the needs of the male colonies. And then you get, um, what do you call them, this group of 50 women who were sort of imported to be slightly more upmarket brides yeah, for the company so the, employees. What are they called? 56 women that arrive in 1621 and 1622. Um, they were specifically here to be wives for the settlers here. They were maids young and um, I feel like the word uncorrupt is in the primary maids young and, young and <laughs> resource, fair. but maybe, <laughs> um, um, but yeah, educated maids to be to be wives for the settlers here. And right. there was one fantastic story, I've forgotten the lady's name, who got captured, didn't she? And she got yes. taken into the, into the forest by the Indians. Anne and Jackson. And she survived for six years, mm -hmm. came back to the, uh, the colony and there she <laughs> she was made to work in the house of a doctor, and he treated her so badly that she said, actually, I preferred it when I was with the Indians. <laughs> mm -hmm. And did you go back? 
No. <laughs> well, we don't know. So no. the story of Anne Jackson, we we don't know. After mm-hmm. 1628, we don't know if she ever went back to London um, or, or to England. But we were speaking in the gallery about these stories and how so much of what um, of what we know about these women, we're just pulling, we're pulling threads. We're reading between the lines of history using the documents that we have. And we can only really surmise sometimes what what their fates were. Um, but again, com- coming back to this idea of tenacious survival, these women yeah. are here. Mm. And you've very tenaciously also done the best that you can, and it's just amazing what you've done, with archaeology. So if they're not mentioned mm-hmm. in historical sources, then there are other ways of recovering their lives through uh, We had excavating. very interesting archaeology, including cannibalism, that uh, reared its ugly That's head right. uh, a while back. But it happened, you know, the this, this starvation. And then there was a lost colony mm-hmm. where they, they vanished, but then gray-eyed Indians suddenly appeared down in the Carolinas. So that the tenacious women that have been over here have been very mm-hmm. tenacious for, for a lot of years. Right. And and But your lecture uh, tomorrow evening is going to focus on, I guess, the life of Queen Victoria. And I, it is, it is. I'm going to take her through her very long life. But as well as looking at her as, as, as the glamorous queen, I'm also going to see how her struggle, if you like, because everybody has a struggle, even if you're immensely privileged and wealthy and celebrated. Her struggle, I think, was to fit into the rules that also existed for being a Victorian woman. Now, a Victorian woman is supposed to be quiet and good and run the home well and love her husband and children. Uh, but, But Queen Victoria was also supposed to be outgoing leader of a nation. So that's a huge amount of pressure to place herself Yeah, you mentioned on, uh, I was watching that program the, uh, the, the, the about the costumes or outfits for the royals. And there was a, there was a story about a event that went on, I guess it may have been Balmoral. Everybody, she had worn tweeds for a month, and then they had a big event. And suddenly she showed up in a silk dress and everybody else, right. was, everybody else is wearing the tartan. <laughs> just to show I'm the queen. You know, yes, I'm, yes. I'm she was very skillful at sort of stage managing mm-hmm. her appearance uh, because she was a constitutional monarch. By the 19th century in yeah. Britain, the monarch no longer has head chopping powers. Uh, she has to rule through influence rather than through command. Right. So that's the that's something that runs from from then to the current day. They exert their influence very often visually through the power of the media, through what they wear, how they behave, how they seem, as opposed to sitting in a council chamber and giving orders. It's soft power, if you like. Yeah. I wonder. One. I wonder if Elizabeth reads the books. Does. Is you know is cognizant of all that history. I'm that sure. I there. think it's very important to the monarchy mm-hmm. because um, what is it if not a set of rituals and practices from the past? They're always referring back to what's gone before. And Queen Victoria set up a lot of institutions that that we still see today, like the royal wedding. I mean, a lot of people enjoyed right. the, the white, wedding. The white wedding. The dress. white wedding. Yeah. Yes, last year the royal wedding was there again, and that ride through the streets with the cheering crowds. Mm-hmm. It's a popular public occasion, the wearing of a white dress. These are all rituals invented in the 19th century. I think she and Albert did the Christmas tree. That was sort of taken from their their German cousins. But yeah. They had been around before, but they really, it was in 1848 that their uh, picture of their decorated tree just became the the image of the year. It was in all the magazines (laughs) and it flashed around the world. And that really spoke to, it chimed in with Victorian values which were all about the yeah. family and domesticity and even the queen i feel had to be sort of slightly put in her box she had to appear to be you know at home with the children celebrating rather than going out and do- doing any more more active form of queening <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny to we're talking about a kind of conversations coming around and coming home um the first christmas tree in williamsburg well in in virginia i think was in the 1840s right here in in williamsburg in a home off of duke of Kloster street uh, i think as a gentleman named charles minigrode i think was yeah, responsible Minigrode, yeah. for for bringing that here mm. and that's interesting I, and you said 1848 and i think that's the same year that a christmas tree well, shows probably, up yeah, but, I mean, in it, virginia the, the ships and commerce you know with the tobacco sales and mm-hmm. that kind of thing virginia has always had a very close connection yes, uh, yes. To, yeah. to england still does and uh, the jamestown and williamsburg when you come over here the, you said this is your first time visiting when you drive around the area norfolk suffolk portsmouth uh, you know all the different names are all the old english names and mm-hmm. so when people come over they feel very comfortable because this this was the the original colony and, mm. 
and people still feel a very warm uh, connection to things that are going on. But, uh, Kate, you've got some other uh, tenacious women, not just the English. You, you've got a whole series uh, there at, uh, at uh, Jamestown. In our exhibition, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, again, Jamestown Settlement. We just opened the exhibition in November um, of last year, and it's going to be open throughout 2019, so okay. you have lots of opportunities to come and see it. And we do. We talk about the, the various cultures that met um, in Jamestown and, and came together. Um, we have, of course, um, as, as Lucy mentioned, of course, the English women who arrive um, starting in 1608. But, of course, the women who are here first are those Virginia Indian women, the Powhatan women, who yeah. we know were interacting with the English men in the fort. And poor Pocahontas went over there and died. Yeah, that's correct. That's <laughs> right. That's right. And we discussed that, too, that she, uh, she dies um, and is buried at Gravesend. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then, of course, Angelo, the first documented African woman right. to, to arrive in, in Virginia. And we tell her story and, and others as well. And there's a huge number of, of British loans and objects that have been brought over the Atlantic for this exhibition as well, from the Shakespeare Birth Palace Trust mm -hmm. and the Victorian Albert Museum and the Museum of London. London. And these, these things are never normally together. So I feel it's really a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to right. see them in these in this sort of network of relationships and meanings that, that, that Kate sort of applied to what could be just a load of old objects. Right. Sure. Not just a load of old, just like mm. you when you do your television programs. Everything comes to life. You have a lot of fun. And Kate, uh, I'm going to wish you very well in the forthcoming exhibition. The exhibition actually is open now. It is, And yes. you can go, uh, you just get a ticket and go on in. And, it is, and it's included it. in your admission to Jamestown Settlement. Okay. It's not an extra fee. Yeah, you need to take Lucy through Jamestown Settlement. You've got to see the three ships. You can't believe they came over in those tiny little ships. <laughs> and But but they made it, and uh, you have made it over. I'm sure you flew an airliner, which is a much more comfortable way to get over here these days. But we're so glad that you are here in Virginia. Please come back. And, uh, Kate, we want to hear from you again what's Absolutely. going on over there. We are always pleased to be the, uh, the voice of culture here in Hampton Roads and let people know what's going on. Thank you. So tomorrow night... Uh, tenacious Women Lecture, Dr. Lucy Worsley, uh, familiar face on WHRO TV, and we'll look forward, Lucy, to more of uh, your programs. I know you've got, what do you got coming up, just real quick? Well. What are you, what are you working on? What's your next? I've got, I've got to go. I'm uh, just trying to here. think, I'm just trying to think what will be shown in America, because I, I, I don't really know that That's right, yet. yeah, we have the, yeah, the, the, the yeah. arrangement with BBC. Yeah, yeah. ITV. Well, I don't know if it's ever going to make its way over here. It might be unsuitable for American eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's because I've just done a series that's been shown in Britain called American History's Biggest Fibs. I was going to ask you a about that. A little presumptuous yeah. of me, perhaps. That's okay. <laughs> now, we even have a, a couple of programs on the uh, satellite channels that have the same type of premise that, you know, the George Washington really didn't throw the silver dollar across the Delaware and that type of thing. So we'll look forward to that. That would be kind of a fun thing. I'm sure <laughs> when it comes out, we will show it. But in the meantime, uh, everybody enjoy the lecture. It's sold out, by the way. You can't get tickets anymore. So the minute they mentioned that you were coming, boom, <laughs> the tickets went out. Uh, and uh, so you'll have to just, if you've got the lucky ticket, and I've got one, I'll be over there. Uh, tomorrow evening, come on out to the Robbins Foundation Theater. 7 p.m. Uh, is the time for the lecture, and you'll do a, uh, have the books, uh, the book on Queen Victoria after the lecture, and uh, just enjoy your time over here. And Kate, take care of her. Oh yeah, and, we try. Uh, Y'all have a grand, <laughs> grand tour through Virginia, just like Queen Elizabeth did a couple of years ago. And Lucy, we hope to see you back. Thank you very much. Thank you both very much. Thank take you. Care.